Yo, there's a library I discovered recently that makes working with React State like 10 times more enjoyable. How? Well, technically it's really simple. It just takes stuff from State and puts it into your URL. Things like your current page number or the amount of items you want to show per page, for example, in a table. The benefit is that all information persists when you reload the page, when you share the page, or when you access it through your bookmarks. Now, we'll take a look at this demo here in a second, but if done well, saving state in a URL and that rhyme, by the way, can have really beautiful effects on user experience. So check this out. This Ray.so website that I just pulled up is a code screenshot website. And as we type code inside of here, the code is being saved in the URL. Code is equal to YXMGD whatever, right? Which is what I assume a base64 representation of this code. And as we type in more code, this gets saved right here in the URL. You can notice this gets longer. So if we now reload the page, bam, there we are. If we share the page with a friend, they see the exact same code snippet that we typed in here without any kind of database involvement. And that is pretty sick. Hell dude, we could even just go ahead and bookmark the site, right? Every benefit that I described in the intro, we get right here by saving state in the URL. And how do we practically implement that, right? That's the question. In this video, we're going to take a look at a package called Nux or NU. Q, uh, listen, I don't know, man, you, you can see it right here, whatever the hell uh, this is pronounced, right? We're going to take a look at a demo right now together of how this works in practice. And I think a much uh, better approach is doing this in Chrome because here we can actually see the URL, which is localhost 3000 with a what up Josh and an input field Josh that you know, changes whatever is displayed up here. So this is super, super basic. We just keep track of a state, standard React state, and have an input that updates the state. And we simply render out the state, the name right here, which is Josh, and then whatever you type in. But as you'll notice, whenever we reload the page, hello, and now I reload, bam, it's gone. And the reason for this is that state operates just in memory. And dude, in memory is just a fancy term for as a const right here, or let var, whatever it is. Those are in memory variables, meaning if we reload a page, everything in memory is lost. This is not saved in local storage, in session storage, anywhere. But all we need to do using this really cool NUQS package is check this out. Instead of use state, we can use almost a drop in replacement use query state, right? So these are the query params that can be in the URL. This is why it's called use query state. And instead of the value, Josh, in our case, we want to give the state, let's give this the name property. And this is how the state will be reflected in the URL. And right away, you can see that works. We no longer use use state from React. We now use use query state, but we don't get any syntax error. So we can get rid of all unused imports using shift, alt, and O, by the way, in VS Code, just a little trick right there. And now we see what up random visitor. Why is that? By default, this is null. We don't have any URL param right here in our URL that would give this a value. But if we typed in Josh, now you can see name Josh. The URL updates in the real time as we type right here. And this is beautiful because just like this, with this drop in replacement, we got every single benefit that I described earlier. We can now reload our page. Bam. You can barely see it, but I'm reloading the page right now. We can bookmark it and always go back to this exact state. We can share it with friends and they will see the exact same thing as we do right now. When is this useful? For example, with pagination. That's number one. With pagination, you always have like a um, limit equals 30 and page equals two, right? The user should be able to have their pagination in the URL. And with this use query state, that is really, really easy. And a big question is how do we handle default values? We can't just pass like Josh or your name as the default value as the second argument, right? It does not work like that because in URL, everything is a string, right? This needs to be a string and then parsed back right here. So what we can do instead is use a utility function provided by this library called parse as string right here and simply go ahead and import that. All that does is turn the name into a string. Same thing if you wanted a boolean or whatever, it's parse as boolean, parse as date, whatever you want. And this now takes a dot default or with default in which we can actually pass something like Josh, for example. 
And now if we go ahead and reload our page, you can see there is no null value anymore on page render, but it's now Josh and anything we type after that is just appended to that string, right? And if we remove it, bam, there we go. We now have an empty string as the input. And you can get as complex as you want, but chances are your use cases are rarely gonna be very complex state operations with this library. Another super common use case would be the parse as Boolean that I mentioned, right? And instead of name, we could say is modal open because modal states in URL are a really good idea. If you reload a page, you expect the same modal with the same selected options in that modal to be opened automatically. So if the modal is open, in that case, we're gonna render modal open. And in the other case, we're gonna render modal closed, right? Let's go ahead and save that modal closed. And whenever we click this, toggle button up here you can see right here in the url is modal open is now set to true and we can toggle it as many times as we want and reload the page and get the exact same state you get the idea this is beautiful now one problem that this implementation has but it's handled by the library but doing this yourself would be kind of tricky is things like browser differences right safari has a kind of problem with this. Let me show you. If we just had the name value right here, right? In Chrome, this works beautifully. Let's get rid of all the query prompts and just type stuff in. You can see the URL is updated almost in real time as we type, right? With a like 50 millisecond delay approximately. In Safari, and this is why it would be kind of tricky implementing this yourself, because the thing is Safari takes much longer to update, right? It has a much higher throttle than, for example, Chrome, right? As we type stuff in, you can see it does not get updated in real time, but with a approximately 340, 350 millisecond delay. And you can specify all of that, for example, right here in the throttle milliseconds, right? This library handles all the edge cases. We don't need to worry about it. And when you're implementing this yourself, um, you kind of do need to worry about it. Yo, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I think this is really cool for things like pagination, man. I always did it myself and I remember hating implementing this so much. And now there's just a drop in for React State. How cool is that? I really, really like this and I hope you do too. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's gonna be it for me for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.